A galvanic cell, which is also called a voltaic cell, is a redox reaction that generates electricity. In this video, I'm going to be explaining to you how a galvanic cell works. We'll be looking at the redox reaction that takes place between zinc, metal, and copper 2 plus ions. And to start with, I'm going to draw you a picture of this reaction. This is not going to be a galvanic cell. In this reaction, we combine solid zinc metal, just like a chunk of zinc. It's a really nice kind of silvery gray color. And we drop this chunk of zinc metal into a solution of copper two plus ions. Copper two plus ions are a really pretty turquoisey blue color. When the zinc metal comes in contact with the copper two plus ions, the zinc metal immediately begins transferring electrons to the copper two plus ions. This is a spontaneous process, meaning that it just automatically happens. This is the redox reaction. The redox reaction is defined as transfer of electrons from one thing to another. As the zinc ions transfer their electrons, excuse me, as the zinc atoms transfer their electrons to the copper ions, the zinc atoms are converted into zinc ions. Zinc ions are soluble in water. So as the zinc ions are formed, they break away from this chunk of zinc and they dissolve in the solution. Zinc ions in solution are colorless. So this solution, the blue color fades away as this reaction takes place. Also, simultaneously, the copper ions are absorbing the electrons coming from the zinc atoms. And as the copper ions absorb the electrons, they're converted into copper metal. We'd like to imagine this, you know, forming a nice big chunk of copper metal in the bottom of the beaker. It doesn't quite work that way. In reality, all of the copper atoms that are formed, they just kind of settle on the bottom of the beaker like a sediment. And it's kind of a like a rusty brown color kind of looks like this but the color changes that take place here give us a really good visual that this reaction is happening now again i want to emphasize this is not a galvanic cell a galvanic cell is one that generates electricity and this reaction is um, not generating any electricity at all in order for us to convert this into a galvanic cell, we need to find a way to capture these electrons as they are moving from the zinc to the copper two plus ion. And this process of capturing these electrons is actually really easy to do. All that we need to do is basically separate the zinc from the copper so that they're not in contact with each other with each other anymore so kind of put a barrier between them but still connect them with a wire or something that the electrons can travel along so that's um, what we're going to draw next i'm going to like shrink this get this out of the way i'll stick it up over here in the corner and we're going to turn this into a galvanic cell so the galvanic cell needs to have two compartments. It needs to have, in this case, one compartment for the zinc and a separate compartment for the copper. This is how we're going to get it to generate electricity. In one, uh, one of these components of the galvanic cell, we're going to have the solid zinc, and in the other component, we're going to have the copper two plus ions. We need to have a piece of solid zinc that's really easy for us to attach a wire to. Remember that our goal here is to use a wire to transfer the electrons or to allow the electrons to transfer between the, the zinc and the copper. So we need to have our zinc in a form where we can easily attach a wire. This form we refer to as an electrode. An electrode is going to be either kind of like a flattened out rectangular piece of metal. Imagine you just, you know, kind of cut a piece of aluminum foil into a little rectangular shape, or it could also be an, like shaped kind of like a nail, like a metal cylinder. So this is going to be our zinc solid. And this, again, we refer to as an electrode. And we are going to attach a wire to this zinc solid. 
If you've ever played with electronics, we're gonna use like an alligator clip sort of a thing. That's just a wire that has a clip on it that we can just clip directly onto this. So this is going to be a wire. Now remember that as this zinc atom tra transfers its electrons to the copper, it becomes zinc ion. So when this reaction starts taking place, our zinc atoms are gonna be breaking away from this electrode and they're gonna be becoming zinc two plus ions. We're gonna help that process along by just starting this whole thing off in a solution of zinc ions. We're just gonna put it in zinc ions to begin with so I'm gonna kind of color this in. Remember our zinc ions are colorless when they're in solution. One thing that I didn't really talk about much when I was drawing this picture up here, um, one thing I didn't talk about much is that you can't just have beakers full of cations without any anions present. So we will need to have some sort of anion present inside this solution. Actually, I wanna draw my zinc a little lower. I'm gonna put my zinc down here my zinc ions in this solution. I'm going to need to have some sort of anion present with them. Whatever the anion is, I want something that's really kind of generic, inert, non-reactive. Chloride ions are really good choices to use for this reaction. Um, because of the difference in charge, I'm gonna have two chloride ions for every one zinc ion. So this is one half of the reaction all ready to go, one half of the galvanic cell. Now let's pay attention to our other half of the cell and I'm actually going to squeeze it a little bit closer. So over here in this side, this is where we have our copper two plus ions. And also just like over here, we need to have some sort of anion to go along with them. Let's just use chloride ions just because they're pretty generic. Uh, and we're going to need to connect this wire from the zinc electrode to the solution over here. Now we can't just dip the wire straight down into the solution and expect anything magical to happen. We are going to need an electrode over on this side of the, of the galvanic cell as well. And the electrode that we choose over on this side, it just needs to be something that's a good conductor of electricity. We just need something that's going to allow the electricity to come down, to allow the electrons to come down into solution and get picked up by the copper ions. It's always a really cool um, idea if you can match the ion up with the electrode. And we're able to do that in this case. So we're gonna make an electrode over here out of copper metal. It's not always possible to match the electrode up with the ions in solution. In that situation, you could use something like graphite or platinum. So this is another electrode. And as we know, the copper two plus solution is this really pretty blue color. So I'll color that in blue. And this is pretty much all that it takes to make a galvanic cell. As soon as we connect the electrodes to each other with this wire, the zinc atoms are going to start losing electrons. The electrons are gonna flow along this wire down into the copper solution. The zinc atoms are going to lose, each one will lose two electrons and they're going to be converted into the zinc ions um, in the solution. This is the half reaction that's taking place on this side of the galvanic cell. The copper ions are gonna, or excuse me, the, the electrons are gonna come down into the copper solution. The electrons will fall off of the electrode. They'll get absorbed by the copper ions, which will convert them into the copper metal. So that's, that is the half reaction that's taking place on this side. The one thing that we have to add to this, so one thing that, that takes place when we're um, running a galvanic cell, over here on this side, because the half reaction that's taking place on this side generates zinc two plus ions, this is going to just start, start to spontaneously produce zinc two plus ions in solution, which would ultimately cause this solution to get an imbalance between cations and anions, which is not possible. Uh, Mother Nature won't allow that to happen. Same kind of thing over on this side as the copper two plus ions are converted into copper 
metal, the copper two plus ions are going to get pulled out of this solution, which is also something that is not possible. So um, the last component that this galvanic cell needs is something called a salt bridge. A salt bridge is an open tube, it's open to both sides, and this just contains some sort of inert non-reactive ionic compound like KCl. The KCl solution migrates back and forth between these two half reactions in order to maintain charge balance. So over here on this side, as the zinc ions are being formed, the KCl salt bridge is going to dump chloride ions into the solution to help uh, maintain the charge balance. And it's going to dump potassium ions into this solution in order to maintain charge balance. So this is what we call the salt bridge. Really important component. Last but not least, we have a couple of special names that we use for the electrodes in a, in a galvanic cell. The electrode where the oxidation is taking place is referred to as the anode. The anode is the site of the oxidation. Oxidation being the place where electrons are being lost. And the electrode where the reduction is taking place is called the cathode. The cathode is the site of reduction. And it's important that you know the difference between the anode and the cathode. Um, and one of the ways that you can help remember the difference between the uh, anode and the cathode is just imagine a red cat like a kitty cat that is the color red. That's the trick that I use to help me remember that reduction is taking place at the cathode.